Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. In this video, the topic I'm going to be discussing is, can man deceive God? So firstly, what does it mean to deceive somebody? Well, to deceive someone is to trick them into believing something that is not true. For example, in Genesis chapter 3 verses 4 and 5, Satan the devil tricked Eve into believing that if she ate the forbidden fruit, she would not die, whereas she would actually die because that was what God commanded. If you also read the story of Samson and Delilah, you can see that sometimes when Delilah would ask Samson what would be done to him so that he would lose his great strength, Samson would tell her something, but then by the time she brought the Philistines over to arrest him, he would just break the strings or the ropes or whatever was used to tie him. And you know, they wouldn't be able to grab him. Delilah had no way of knowing that Samson was deceiving her because she couldn't see his heart. If you also look at the story of Potiphar and Potiphar's wife and Joseph, you see that Potiphar's wife had deceived her husband into believing that Joseph was actually trying to molest her, whereas it was actually her that was trying to harass Joseph. And then by the time Joseph got fed up and then he ran away, then Potiphar's wife lied to her husband. And that was how Joseph went to prison and so on and so forth. So because we as human beings are unable to read people's minds or see inside people's hearts, we can't really know whether people are saying the truth to us or what people actually think about us. We can only know by what they say, how they do things, how they dress. That's how we get to understand people. Well, we can't just like look at people's minds or we can't actually just read people's minds and know exactly what they're thinking because we simply aren't powerful enough to do that. But the Bible tells us that God actually is. If you read Acts chapter 1 verse 24, you see that Peter had made reference to the fact that God sees into the hearts of all men. Nothing is hidden from him. He can see everything that we think, that we believe, everything. And he understands it more than even we understand it because he created us. If you read Psalm 100 verse 3 and Acts chapter 17 verses 24 to 28. And that was why in Hebrews chapter 4 verse 13, the book of Hebrews told us that neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight. For all things are naked and opened unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. If you also read Psalms chapter 11 verse 4, you see the same thing that God sees everything. And King Solomon said in Proverbs chapter 15 verse 3, the eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding the evil and the good. That's why God said to Jeremiah the prophet, can any hide himself in secret places that I shall not see him, said the Lord? Do not I fill heaven and earth, said the Lord? Jeremiah chapter 23 verse 24. And there are more such texts. In Amos chapter 9 verses 2 to 4, God used Amos the prophet to tell his people that whether you go to heaven or whether you go down to hell, from there I'm going to pluck you up, from there I'm going to bring you down because I can see everything. There's nothing that is not in my sight. Darkness and day, they're equal to him. If you read Psalm 139 verse 12, Far and near, they're the same. There's absolutely no physical barrier that he's restricted to. So he can see absolutely everything, including what is inside our hearts. And that's why the way God judges things is different. If you read 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 7, when Samuel wanted to choose the individual who would become king, Samuel looked at Jesse's first son and was like, this has to be the person God chose. But then God told him, look not on his countenance or on the height of his stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord seeth not as man seeth. For a man looketh at the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. So what does all this mean? What this means is that it is impossible for us to be able to trick God or outsmart God because he just thinks at a higher level and he's able to see things we don't see. That's why in Isaiah chapter 55 verses 8 and 9, he said, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, and your ways are not my ways, said the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. 
Now that we've looked at so many biblical texts and we can clearly see that we cannot deceive God because he can see everything. There's nothing that is hidden from him. We'll now look at some examples of individuals and people who thought they could trick God, play God, take God for a ride, deceive God, whereas they actually couldn't and they found that out at the end. If you read Ezekiel chapter 8, this is a very good example of this. God was revealing all the abominations that his people were committing to Ezekiel. Because the thing is, in the temple, it's behind closed doors. People could do whatever they wanted. And it was based on the fact that the priests were responsible for taking care of the holy things. So no one would really be watching what they were doing. But they started doing terrible stuff there. They started praying um, to the sun. They started offering incense to idols. They started doing everything that God said they shouldn't do. If you read the book of Deuteronomy, everything that God was criticizing, don't do this, don't worship other gods because I'm a jealous God. If you read Exodus chapter 20 verses five and six and so on, they were violating everything. But many of the Israelites didn't know because they weren't able to see in the temple because once again, it was behind closed doors. But God used the vision to reveal to Ezekiel everything that they were doing. He was like, open this door, open that door. And then he was seeing all the abominations that people were committing. God could see everything, but the priests and the other people who were committing those abominations thought that God wasn't seeing anything. If you read Isaiah chapter 29, verse 15, you see that the way these people think was described. Isaiah the prophet said, Woe unto them that seek deep to hide their counsel from the Lord, and whose works are in the dark, and they say, Who seeth us, or who knoweth us? If you also read Psalm 73, verse 11, the attitude of these people was similarly described. They say, how doth God know? Or is there knowledge with the Most High? They forget what the psalmist had known in Psalm 94, verses 3 to 10, where he was talking about how people think they can deceive God. But the person who created the eye and the ear, wouldn't he be able to see? The person who created our ability to think, would he not be able to think even better? And so on and so forth. So it's impossible to be able to hide from God. But it's not just about physically trying to make sure that God isn't seeing what you're doing. It's also about your attitude to worship. Some people think that they can pretend to worship God. Really, they're loving the world. But they're, you know, maybe they're attending the synagogues in those days, paying their tithes, or in today's terms, attending church services regularly. Those are just physical things that... You can tell your neighbor, oh, I attended church services every Sunday and so on. I've been paying my tithes regularly. You can tell human beings that if you want. You can say, I'm a Christian, I'm a Christian, I'm a Christian. But God has the ability to see into that. He's able to know what your priorities are, where your heart actually is, what you are seeking. Things you won't tell anybody, God has the ability to see them. If you read Matthew chapter 23, verses 25 to 28, Jesus Christ, who by virtue of the fact that he was anointed with the Holy Spirit without measure, according to John chapter 3, verse 34. So he was actually able to see like a spiritual individual because of that divine gift. So he could see everybody's hearts. He can know what people were thinking. If you read John chapter 2, verses 24 to 25. As a result of that, he was able to see through all the tricks that the Pharisees were trying to play on the people to deceive them, thinking that they were actually deceiving God as well. But if you read Matthew chapter 23, verses 25 to 28, Jesus Christ was just like, we we'll want to use scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you're like whited sepulchers that indeed appear beautiful outward. Like, you know, sometimes if you're walking by a, a funeral place or so on, you see, decorated building. It's fantastic. It's wonderful. But inside, there are lifeless people there. That, is, that, that isn't a holy thing, but the building itself usually looks fantastic, glorious. The Pharisees were always dressed with their long robes. They looked fantastic, immaculate on the outside. But inside, there was hypocrisy. There was greed. There was malice. There was all kinds of evil stuff, works of the flesh that Paul spoke about in Galatians chapter 5, verses 19 to 21. They thought that God couldn't see that, but God could. And that was why 36 and a half years later, 
after the Pharisees had killed Jesus Christ, God then came after them. So he was able to see everything that was going on. And that was why Jesus Christ told them, Ye are they which justify yourselves before men, but God knoweth your hearts. For that which is highly esteemed among men is abomination in the sight of God. Thus, if we decide to live and worship God on the outside, but our actual heart is somewhere else, then we're kind of wasting our time. In other words, as Jesus Christ said, we are just worshiping in vain in Matthew chapter 15, verses 7 to 9, because there won't be any reward. So that's another really good example. If you also look at the way the Israelites in the wilderness and throughout their history of being a nation, the way they would pretentiously try to repent anytime God would punish them as a result of their sins. They would pretend to say, God, forgive us. God, forgive us. We'll, we'll put away all our idols. We'll serve you and so on. But then they would go back later on. God could read through all that. That's why in Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 10, he was like, Judah repents faintly. They, they feel that they can trick me into believing that they're actually sincere and then, you know, take me for a ride. If you look at Psalm 78, verses 36 and 37, the psalmist who had a fantastic understanding of Israelite history, right from when God chose Abraham all the way to his time, he commented on the fact that the Israelites tried to flatter God or take God for a ride by pretending to repent, whereas they never actually wanted to serve God in the first instance, and so on and so forth. And there are many more of such examples of people thinking they can deceive God. But as Job had said, God takes the wise in their own craftiness, and the counsel of the forward is carried headlong. If you read Job chapter 5, verse 13, and what's more, Paul had said in Galatians chapter 6, verse 7, Be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. So now we're beginning to understand why we cannot deceive God. It's because he has the ability to see everything. We can't hide from him. We can't lie to him. We can't trick him. He can think so much higher than we can. He can see what we can't see. There's basically no point. Therefore, if we want to worship God, we can't hold back, you know, give half, but then leave our other half of our lives to just love the world. If you read Acts chapter 5 verses 1 to 11, you see that Ananias and Sapphira wanted to deceive the apostles by selling a property, but only bringing half of the money. But the apostles knew because of how spiritual they were, and those two died as a result. So there's really no point trying to deceive God by feigning uh, belief in Christ, but then going ahead to live a secular kind of life. If you read 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 14 and 15, Paul described what I'm trying to get at here. He said that we cannot be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. We can't say we're Christians and we attend church services and so on, but then if someone who doesn't worship God looks at us and our priorities and the kinds of things we like and our interests, and then he looks at someone who doesn't know God and we just look the same, there's, there's absolutely no difference then we're not really worshiping. It's just on the outside, but it isn't actually on the inside. We actually have to be different. We have to be separate. If you read Isaiah chapter 52, verse 11, and 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 16 and 17. And to conclude, in 1 Chronicles chapter 28, verse 9, David, who understood the fact that God is able to see all hearts, and thus, if we want to worship him, we should be sincere about it, advised his son Solomon and thou, Solomon, my son, know thou the God of thy father, and serve him with a perfect heart and with a willing mind. For the Lord searcheth all hearts and understandeth all the imaginations of the thoughts. If thou seek him, he will be found of thee. But if thou forsake him, he will cast thee off forever. And that is where I think I'll stop on discussing that subject. Can man deceive God? To conclude this episode, let's hear a tune that some of us might enjoy.
Now let us pray. Heavenly Father, we are continually grateful for all the wisdom we've been able to acquire through your word. We pray that you continue to teach us more about your kingdom so that we can build a good and strong relationship with you and serve you in a way that pleases you. We also pray that you have mercy on us and forgive us of our weaknesses as we sincerely desire to overcome the challenges that the devil will try to throw at us and become pure, chaste children before you. All to your honor, glory, and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If you have enjoyed this video and learned something new today, then as I always say, I would appreciate it if you click the like button and also the subscribe button. And if you want to be notified when I come back with more subjects just like this, then you can click the notification bell. Have a good day and God bless you.